If you want to become a data scientist, then this video is for you. We're living in a world of data. We take pictures, we use Google Maps to find a restaurant, and we visit websites, watch videos, and send a lot of messages all the time. And everything we do generates data. And while data can be used for bad things, it can also be used for lots of good things too, such as finding the right treatment for a patient, or even developing a new medicine. But data is only as good as what we do with it, because raw data isn't useful at all. It's kind of like an uncut gem. It holds the potential that only the right expertise and the right skills or the right tools can unlock. And this is where data science comes in. Now data science is not a new thing. It's been used for thousands of years and it was used all the way back in ancient Egypt to predict floods and grow crops so that people could just feed their families. Data science is all about turning raw data into gold or data into insights. And we're just going to go through a basic version of the data science process together right now. You start by collecting data from somewhere because you need a data source. And perhaps the data is already available, we just have to download it or get it sent to us. And in other cases, we may have to actually find the data and retrieve it ourselves, collect it somehow. But actually, the process starts way before you even start collecting your data, because we actually need to define the question or the problem that we're trying to solve. And this is going to guide and direct everything we do after. Next, again, the data is kind of like an uncut gem, so we need to clean our data. And this is really critical, because if our data is incorrect or it contains a lot of errors, we're not going to be able to use it properly either. It's just going to end up in a lot of mistakes and a lot of issues. And the reason why we spend so much time data cleaning is because imagine if you build a house and thinking that the ground is solid, only to have the ground collapse and the entire house going down with it. And then we're going to explore our data using something called EDA, or exploratory data analysis. And here we're kind of looking for patterns and things that stand out in the data set. And it gives us a really valuable first look into the data as well. And it's very important for the future steps that are to come. Next, we'll get into something called data modeling. And a model in data science is kind of like a tool that helps you make sense of your data. To build a model, you choose a method that is appropriate, and then you use your existing data to train this model. And basically the model kind of learns from the data you prepared, make predictions or find patterns. But how do we know if the model that we made is good or not? Well, we evaluate it by testing it, of course. And next, there's also a step that we cannot forget, and it's communication, both during all the steps, but especially to explain your findings to relevant stakeholders or whoever you have to explain it to. Communication is really important during all of the steps, but especially to explain your findings, because your goal is to make your findings clear and understandable and actually useful to the right people. For example, using graphs or other forms of data visualizations. The key thing here is to share your insights or outcomes from your work to your stakeholders. And these people are usually not as technical as you, nor do they have a lot of time to spare. So you'll have to keep it clear and concise with effective communication. But next, we'll have to deploy your model. And this means making your model available for real, practical use. And you basically take the model that you built and tested and start using it to make predictions or analyze data in a real world environment. And it's pretty hard to say how this looks exactly, but it could be integrating the model into a business process or the actual software that you're using. Now, over time, the data or the actual situation itself that you're studying might completely change, and that's normal. That is why the next step, maintenance, involves updating your model to ensure that it stays accurate and relevant in the future as well. And you might have to feed some new data into it or just adjust the model as needed. In general, I want to clarify that the data science process is not always perfect. You may go back and forth between different steps and do multiple iterations to achieve your goals or just focus on one thing more for a certain project, and that's completely normal. Now, let's Let's talk about money and the pay of a data scientist in the US is around 124,000 per year depending on your experience of course this is a fantastic salary and many of the other data roles pay great as well a data engineer makes around 76 to 184,000 per year on the high end a data analyst around 50 to over 100,000 per year and there's just so many different ways and you know so many different jobs that you can do in data science and how you start and the career that you take will depend on your prior experience and your education of course if you do come from a more technical background, you'll have some of the more technical roles like a data scientist available to you. But even if you come from a non-technical background or you have zero relevant experience, you can still start a career in data science. It's certainly not going to be easy to get a job, but you can find a lot of great resources for free, even on YouTube. And after you take courses, it's a really good idea to start building your own projects and building your portfolio, as this is going to help you get hired in the long run. Check the description for a free data science roadmap with the exact courses included, made together with industry experts and I'll see you in the next video.